All right, so I have just reached the stage of this sculpture's life where enough of the elements are close enough to the point where I can assemble them and get a good sense of the overall everything. Eh, not everything, but mostly everything. The colors, you know, most of the way there. I mean, he's pretty much black and white. Um, the armor pieces are blocked in enough to get a sense of them proportionately to the body. Um, the weight is now enough that I can make sure that it's structurally um, sufficient to hold itself up. That kind of stuff. Um, and so what I discovered while doing this is once I get all the armor pieces on, specifically this leg area, well, let's look at our reference again, shall we? Right. So, basically he's got baby stubby legs. Um, I kind of had a suspicion this might be happening a couple times. It was kind of nagging at the back of my brain. But it only just now really hit me full force once I put the armor pieces on. So, what I now have to do is make a very difficult decision. Do I go with it and just let it be its own thing, separate from the um, actual reference, or do I redo the legs? Now, one thing to keep in mind is I have now been working on it 22 days. So, Let's see, what is the maths here? 22 days times 24 hours in each day, that is this many hours. Okay. That could either push me towards, eh, it's good enough, or it can be sunk cost fallacy, which is I put so much time and effort into it to do anything other than my very best seems like kind of um, devalues the amount of time I already have put into it. And that's the way my artist brain tends to work. Um, this is kind of, a, kind of a magnum opus for me, so uh, I really want it to be good. So, I think I'm going to redo the legs. I think they need to be about a time and a half as big as they are now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some photographs of the piece. I'm going to put those in Photoshop next to the reference, try to find some angles that are, that are close, and um, try to do some math magics to figure out exactly how much it should be. I went to a hardware store, bought some hard metal things, um, I really don't want to learn how to weld, so I came up with this kind of tinker toy system that I think will work, and we'll get into that and we'll find out if it works. So, yeah, here we go. This is my attempt to elongate my short-legged friend. Here we go. Alright, so I spent some time thinking about it, and what I'm hoping to do is salvage... Um, most of the pelvis because it already has the nice interface between the upper pelvis or the upper torso and the lower extremities um, and because it's already pretty close to to there um, I'm gonna it's hard to remember because I literally started this three and a half years ago so it was probably three years ago that I made the structure for the legs the new method that I'm doing is going to be very different. I've learned things since then. So this is kind of cool. You get to see that progression happening. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is is mark off where I think the um, the best place to, to cut the legs off of the pelvis and attach new legs is. And since I've already got the, the cod piece bikini part, I figure I made as well, I might as well uh, use that as my separating line. So I'm just gonna, oops, trace that. Uh, 
Uh, one thing that I noticed when looking at this proportion comparison that I made is that he also has an even thinner waist uh, in comparison to the width of his shoulders than I thought he did. So I'm going to go ahead and grind some of his, um, his hip down a bit. Since I'm going to be doing all this massive reconstruction anyway, might as well. I don't, I don't think that's going to cause much of a structural integrity problem. It might. We'll find out. Um, I'm already pretty nervous about redoing the legs since the uh, since they're going to be longer. Like when you have a supporting member uh, that's not completely um, vertical like this, you know, if it's like this or this, the longer that is, the more pressure um, it has on it and the easier it is to break, which means the stronger you have to make it. So when I'm <laughs> making these new legs and adding several inches, um, that magnifies the problem pretty dramatically. Hopefully making them out of this, this steel structure that I'm going to be doing will do the trick. And I'm only going to actually know once I've pretty much built them and then set the torso and all the armor and all the, you know, weighty elements on top of that. So that's going to be a pretty uh, dicey slash exciting time. We'll see. Okay, let's get to some sanding. Hey, I just want to take a moment to show you a perfect example of why I gave you artist tip number fill in the blank, whatever that one was, about attaching pieces as late in the process as possible. See, I had this back girdle piece um, and it was so thick that I felt like I needed to bury it into the into the skin, which is true, I needed to do that. However, um, now that I'm, you know, re reshaping it, uh, I had to break it into all these pieces to remove it because the resin skin that I put on it stuck to it and so now it's in about, I don't know, six or seven pieces that I'm going to have to gingerly reassemble once I put it back on. So, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. That's, this is exactly why I gave you that tip and why I should have been more careful about heeding my own advice.
Okay, so I think I've got a basic battle plan here. I mocked up the legs based, you know, using the dimensions of this, um, this metal armature that I wanted to design. Um, there's a couple concerns that I have. Um, basically, my biggest worry is this part here where there's going to be weight, you know, compressive force coming down on this and all the tension is going to be held in like one bolt. And since there's only, you know, there's like three or there's going to be three or four um, joints where this is happening, it's going to be distributed amongst those, but not um, evenly because the weight of the statue is not, you know, it's not like a column or a, a cross beam or whatever sitting on two perfectly straight columns. It's got all this crazy organic uh, weight to it. So um, my thought for addressing that was to buy, let's see, I bought a ton of stuff. Let's look at some of it. I'm going to put on gloves because the stuff is covered in oil and also sharp. Right, I got this very solid hunk of metal. This is, uh, let's see, 3 16 inches thick and just solid steel. This is solid stuff. And I'm thinking that if I take it um, and cut it to shape, I can reinforce all of these places. So imagine, imagine it's cut like that, right? Where it goes, and then might have to cut in a little bit there. We'll, we'll see the inner part based on um, how much I can bulk around it and such. So anyway, that that's my thoughts for now. We'll see how far that carries me. I had to buy a tool to do this. I don't have anything that can cut steel like this. I was eating through my, as you just saw, my Dremel tool bits. Like, I think I went through about 10 uh, wheels to cut just for three of the joints, four of the joints. And I've got several more to go. So I got a more um, size appropriate tool. Now I got it at Harbor Freight, which is known for its incredibly shoddy products. Um, this was, <laughs> this piece of hardware ran me $15, which um, if, if you buy a normal one that's not made in a sweatshop in China, it's probably like $60 to $200 range. Um, but because I'm doing one project with it and I don't anticipate using it in the future very often, I'm going to gamble a little bit and if it, you know, if it breaks or whatever, I'll return it. So I got that, I got some steel cutting tools and uh, yeah, let's, let's just watch me dink around with this and do everything wrong for a while, shall we? My apologies up front to anyone who is actually like knows how to work with metal. This is going to be the dumbest possible method for doing this, I guarantee you. I also got a drill bit that hopefully will be able to drill through this steel so that I can put bolts through it. Uh, again, got it at a Harbor Freight, so uh, wish me luck. Protection, always wear protection. And here are my cutoff wheels. This is a 10 pack. Hopefully that'll be enough. Besides having incredibly cheap equipment, uh, one thing I've noted is that no one there has any idea what their tools do. It's, it's quite a strange uh, shopping experience. But you know, if you want a cheap hammer, clamps, stuff like that, that you know, it's not going to last forever, but it's super cheap. That's the place to go. It's too late now, but it looks like maybe this is the wrong tool. It says, um, 
to uh, the grinding wheels should be surface grinding, not edge grinding. I don't know what the difference is. I mean, I'm cutting, I'm not grinding, so whatever, we'll see. I could die. If I do die, here's a pro tip. Don't do what I'm about to do. Also, can someone nominate me for the Darwin Awards? Okay, so we have taken the project to my friend Pat's garage. Hi, Pat. Hey. He's a fellow game developer. He's working on a game. Well, the game is out now. Uh, oh, it's, really? it's called Gigantic, and you should go buy it and play it. Okay, so Pat has so many cool tools, and I was telling him about my project and the travails that I have with rebuilding this guy's metal legs now. And Pat has like welding tools and metal cutting and drilling and filing stuff that I don't have. So here he is. Look at this. He's even got this two ton lift. And fortunately, uh, the Colossus upper torso is just under two tons. So it works out great. So yeah, let's get to work. Yeah. Chicka, chicka, chicka. Wow, thank you so much, Pat. Uh, no you, problem, buddy. You really saved my butt and and literally made a Colossus butt in the process. Uh, see that? That's a butt. Mm -hmm. well, it's kind of like a 
pelvic bowl. Yeah. So something, yeah. Pelvic girdle. <laughs> girdle. Something like that. Yeah. So uh, pro tip number 38 is always have a friend named Pat who has welding equipment and knows how to use it and can weld a pelvis for you when you desperately need it because I really was pretty, getting pretty desperate. So, all right. Well, we'll head back to uh, the Breath of Life Art Studio next. Bye, Pat. Bye-bye. Okay. Beautiful. That was uh, Mr. Rogers' exit. you guys I just thought of something that makes me feel like such an idiot that I hadn't thought of it before in the past three and a half years that I've been working on this um, for whatever reason I had it in my mind that the only way to make this guy stable was to have extendo prongs sticking out of the bottom of his feet and as you see I've been building here it sticks into the base which means the base has to be several inches deep to accept that much um, uh, to make it as stable as possible, right? So it's not gonna wiggle um, because he's so top heavy. And it just now occurred to me as I'm cutting metal to make the sleeve that goes in there that I could just as easily put pegs sticking up out of the base because the leg bones are hollow, they could just slide right into it. And that would be super strong. I could just weld, well, I could ask Pat nicely to weld uh, rods for me that would stick up out of the base. It's just, it's so obvious. And then the base doesn't have to be this giant, like, birthday cake either. It's, and you know what's even, what makes me even stupider? Just a second, let me get something. Look what I just got at the nerd store. These are Star Wars toys. I played with these as a kid, right? Not these exact ones. These look like a newer generation. They're way more detailed, but same thing here. Look at the bottom of their feet. Yep. Holes. So on all the little Star Wars play sets, they had little pegs sticking up out of the floor, which was dumb for a play set but then you could stick your little guys wherever and they would stand up and not fall over, which is great for first generation action figures. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about having a more elegant base now and not having to come up with some reason for it to be six inches tall. And yeah, wow. Okay, anyway, this sort of thing happens in projects 
So sometimes good things, sometimes bad things. Sometimes you realize you wasted a lot of time doing the wrong thing. It's all good. That's part of projects.
basic proportions of the legs that I think I'm going to be more happy with. I'm going to build it up really slowly so that um, several different layers so that I'm not having to grind it back later. Um, and since I have the armor pieces finished this time as opposed to last time I blocked out the legs, I'll be able to place those on as I go to get a much better sense for when they're at the right thickness. The first thing I'm going to try right now with the plastic paste is I'm going to mix a super thin batch and try to squeeze it into the holes. I've got this little syringe here. We'll see if I can get it thin enough. I'm, I'm not sure if I can. I've never done it before. But um, probably completely unnecessary, but it just makes me feel better to know that the, the inside of the bones are kind of filled up as well.
So here is a mistake that I made. And in retrospect, it seems super obvious, but that's retrospect for you. The shafts, rods, what is a less phallic word for this? The pipes. The pipes that I have for the feet, um, you know, I put that sleeve of brass around them and filled around that with the plasti paste so that they would slot in perfectly. That's bad because, um, you know, I was thinking strength and the, the tighter it is, the stronger the, the holdy uppiness it would have. However, uh, my primary problem is that I can't lower this down at an exact 90 degree angle to the ground on both feet at the same time. And I mean, the properties of the material are that this is, this is plywood and bolts and they're screwed in at whatever tension, right? There's all these different factors that keep this from being exactly 90 degrees, right? So it's going to be 89 degrees or 91 degrees. Um, meaning there has to be a little bit of play in that pipe. So one thing, so, so basically to fix this, I either have to uh, make these thinner or make the, the hole inside the foot wider. Uh, both are <laughs> problematic. The, the tube problem is that this is super strong steel and it takes a long time to grind this, especially one big side. Like, I, you know, if I were to grind down, you know, 10% off a side, I could see that taking 20 minutes of just standing in a grinder, which you know, maybe I'll end up doing. Um, first thing I wanted to try was just removing the brass sleeve that's inside the foot, the feet. Problem with that is I lost my long nose pliers, God knows where. And I'm a little concerned that if I try to pull it out and I don't get it all the way out, then it's jammed. And when I try to stick the rod back in, then it's going to jumble up in there, right? Like wadded up metal. And that's going to be bad. So I'm going to kind of play this by ear. Check it out afterwards. Tell me how stupid I was. I think one thing I'm going to do actually real quick. So I'm going to, because it's it would be really easy, I think, to pop the hoof part off and then put it back on and that will give me uh, closer access to the to the opening trying to dig it out with this with very limited success. peel it off here at the mouth of the cavern, but once you get in there, uh, I'm not so sure I can keep it going. I'm trying to be careful to keep it intact. I don't want to jam on it and put a hole in it because then I'll end up just ripping parts out instead of getting the whole thing cleanly out. Man, I could really use some normal needle nose pliers here. I think it's pulled away from the walls fine, but the, the tip of it had all those folds and creases that probably got um, embedded really well in the plastic paste. So the question is, does the tensile strength of this metal compete with uh, the 
um, amount of tension caused by being stuck up at the tip. Uh, minus my ability to actually grip it with this really crappy tool. Yeah, this doesn't grab very well. It's got those uh, kind of a pincher, so it's just going to tear bits out. And that's not very helpful. Alright, I'm going to dig around for a different tool. I think this qualifies for one of those situations where I can say I've made a huge mistake. Because I couldn't actually tell if it was going to work until I'd gone too far to take it back. price I paid for my mistake. But hey, I got it out. I might need stitches. That's pretty bad. I'll get back to you. <laughs>